Hey, thanks for joining us. We are in our first week of diving into the I Am Statements of Jesus. This Sunday we looked at his statement, I Am the Bread of Life. And I really want to focus in on that connection between that verse in John 6.35 and this verse in Matthew 6.25 that we mentioned in the message on Sunday. Therefore, I tell you, do not be anxious about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink, nor about your body, what you will put on. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothing? Here's the connection I want to press into. The fact that Jesus is revealing God as the provider, Jehovah Jireh, Yahweh Yireh, by saying, I am the bread of life, what he's giving us an invitation to is to not be anxious. Now, I want to clarify something. That is not an invitation to not experience anxiety. Anxiety is a clinical term. Anxiety is a product of something that, that's in our fallen psyche, in our fallen bodies. Um, anxiety is something that oftentimes we really can't control. We can seek to get help with. But when Jesus says, therefore, I tell you, do not be anxious about your life, what the invitation is there is to live a life that relies on God's provision for our life, our, our bios, our, our physical life, and free us to focus on the one thing we have to invest in, the one thing that we have to engage and steer, and that's, that's the state of our soul. And so the invitation when Jesus says, I am the bread of life, is the invitation to accept that God is the provider of all that we need. Now that goes to another level of what's the difference between a want and a need, and, and that's something that is a little more complicated in our modern world. You know, I, I want money, but I also need money because the economy of this present age is that without money, I don't eat and I need food. So, so there's primary needs, secondary needs. And I'm going to push that to the side for a moment to really zone in on this idea, idea of, therefore, I tell you, do not be anxious about your life. See, here's what's going on. When we accept that God is our provider, that he is that Yahweh Yireh, the one who provides for us, then we actually can live without being anxious for our lives. Now, being anxious for my life is not the same as experiencing anxiety. Anxiety has clinical roots. Anxiety has roots in our fallen nature, in our, our fallen uh, body chemistry at times, a variety of other things that are fallen. But because God is our provider, then we actually have the choice to not be anxious for our lives. Now, if I'm going to be the kind of person who's not anxious for my life, I also need to increase my capacity to rely on God, to trust God. And so transformation, that idea of Jesus transforming my soul into the very image of himself, the Holy Spirit at work sanctifying me, and me in my will saying I want to participate with the Holy Spirit sanctification process. I want to allow God to have his way in me increases our capacity to not be anxious about our life. Now, I may not be anxious about my life, and I can still experience anxiety from a clinical standpoint. But I wanted to make that differentiation as clear as I possibly could, because what I don't want is for us to just assume that when I feel anxiety, not being anxious, but when I feel anxiety in a clinical sense, I'm somehow just not trusting God to be my provider. It's quite possible that I can trust God to be my provider and still experience clinical anxiety, which is a product of the fallen world. Just like it's possible that I can eat right and stay away from sweets and sugars and, and fried foods and still have diabetes. <laughs> Just like it's possible that, that I can live a life of exercise and, and being smart about the, the health of my heart and still experience a heart attack. So, so I hope that helps you see that when Jesus says, therefore I tell you, do not be anxious about your life, he's not saying that if you experience anxiety, you have a faith issue. What he's saying is because God is our provider, because God cares for us, because he sees our need and meets our needs 
in the way that he best sees fit, we now have the option to not be anxious about our needs. We now have the option to not be anxious about what I'm going to eat or what I'm going to wear. And that's a big, big difference than, than feeling anxiety. So the, ultimately, as we recognize that God is our provider, hopefully what we're doing is taking that knowledge, taking that insight, taking that understanding, letting it become an experience of God as provider through our prayers for provision. Being able to go to God when I have a need and saying, Lord, this is my need. Not just a physical need, but a spiritual need as well. You know, when we can look at it and say, Father, I need you to bring to life in me your kindness, your gentleness, your peacefulness, your loving nature. And being able to pray for those things through, through God because he is our provider is ultimately what we're trying to do with this. So, so hopefully that's a little clarification of what it means that God provides, that he is the bread of life, that he provides for our basic needs. And with that, we can understand that I don't have to be anxious about what I'm going to eat for dinner, but I still might be anxious about what I'm going to eat for dinner. That I don't have to be anxious about how my needs are going to be met, my physical needs, but I still might at times feel anxious about that. And that that feeling of being anxious or the absence of being anxious over my needs being met isn't the same thing as anxiety that tends to to, to rise up in our fallen nature and is actually honestly a state that many people of great faith actually find themselves having to live in. At that point, I would say it's probably more of a cross of being fallen that we have to carry than it is a lack of faith that we're experiencing consequences of. So all that to say simply this, God is our provider. He meets our needs. And you think about in Matthew 6 where Jesus talks about the, the, the birds of the air and the flowers of the field. What he's trying to tell us is that God is a God of life and he will sustain life. He'll sustain our lives. He'll meet our needs. So we now have the freedom to trust God to, to provide for our physical needs, which allows us to say, I'm going to be concerned with the life of my soul above the life of my body. I'm not going to be a person who goes into physical self-preservation, who, who makes the highest priority the things that will bring me life or comfort in this world. I'm going to be a person who relies on God to be my provider for those things so that I can lean on Him to meet my spiritual needs, so that I can participate with the Holy Spirit doing a work of transformation in me so that I can become who he made me to be in my soul so that I can live the very life of Christ. So I hope that's helpful. I know that, that sometimes we use words and the words have a meaning. And this goes back to what, what we talked about in the sermon. We all start with a narrative. And so what I want to do is I want to clarify my narrative of this is not around anxiety. It's around being anxious. And my narrative says anxiety and being anxious are not the same thing. With my clinical background as a counselor in the field of psychology, to me, anxiety is a clinical term. Anxiousness is a life issue. It's something that all human beings experience. And through the statement in John 6, 35, I am the bread of life, Jesus gives us something we can lean on that can actually take us out of feeling anxious over our physical needs being met by increasing our capacity to understand that God is the provider of our physical needs. So I hope that's two things. I hope that's clarifying. I also hope it's helpful. But um, I want to encourage you to have a conversation in your group time now as you go into your discussion about what are the things that you trust God to provide and what are some things that you still think are yours to provide? How can you move to a place of the things that you view as yours to, to bring to realization in your life? Basic things. How can you move to a place of trusting God to provide those things? And when you move to that place, how's your pathway, what's your plan to focus on the Holy Spirit working in your soul and participate in that process? 
So have a great time in your group. I hope it leads to just fruitful discussion with a lot of openness and transparency, and most importantly, connection and community. Let me pray for you before you go into that time. Father, we're just grateful that you're our provider, that we can come to you with every simple Monday need that we have, knowing that it's your delight to provide for our needs and that it's your desire that providing for our needs frees us to focus on the needs of our soul, the spiritual needs. And that highest spiritual need, the greatest need of our soul is relationship with your son. And so God, we thank you that you have freed us to be able to tend to that relationship, to find in him the way to you and to live with you in your kingdom now and forever. We just ask that you would do that in us, free us from the anxiousness of life, to attend to the needs of our soul, and to walk with your Holy Spirit into that transformation. And we ask all that in Jesus' name. Amen. Hey, have a great time in your group.